mention the word guarantee then. I didn't guarantee, no. <laughs> you liar. I you can, tell I, me on the phone yesterday, I'll guarantee <laughs> you'll see one. I guarantee you'll see one <laughs> at, the, at the other site. Oh, OK. At, at your house? Yeah. Yeah, OK. So I'm just leaving home now, loaded up, heading for the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire, where George has very kindly uh, treated me to a couple of nights of wild boar shooting and fox shooting, apparently. He's guaranteed we're going to see both. So on my way now, it's about a two hour drive. Um, I'm going to meet George down here about 6.30, get set up um, and then just uh, hang around and see what happens. We've got some rabbits and some bait and he's got a nut feeder and a corn feeder out that is um, hopefully attracting the boar in. So we'll see you later on. Well, we've arrived here. I've come through torrential thunderstorms and then the next minute the roads was drier like the desert and it's nice and bright and sunny here uh, on the edge of the Forest of Dean here in Gloucestershire. So coming up to the gate, which is where I will hopefully be meeting George in about five minutes. George has just phoned me and given me the code to get into the gate. So behind me is the track that goes up around the outside and then into the centre of the forest. Now I've got no idea where we go in because I came here the last time in the dark and just followed George. So I've decided just to park here on this little like gateway and wait for George to come in and I'll follow him in. So it's about a mile and a half to go. Um, to the lodge that George has built there. So we'll get all set up. That's the plan, get set up in daylight, do our measurements, put some bait out, and then uh, have a cup of tea, something to eat, and then just watch the sun go down. And hopefully the pigs and the foxes come out. So catch you later on. Just have a quick walk up. George is putting the old smelly rabbits out there as bait. Uh, the blue barrel, that's his electronic feeder that uh, sprinkles maize around for the pigs. This is a much more substantial hide that George has built. It's on telegraph poles cemented into the ground. So he's got it all sorted here. Look, he's got a blooming bunk, two of these sort of gaming chair things. So we've got a good view up there. One out to that side where George is coming back and then up to that side. So how long have you had this hide here then? So I've had this hide for about two years I think. Not long after I bought the woods. So we cleared cleared the area. It was full of potholes everywhere. So we got a digger in, filled it, filled everything in, put the hide up and then put the feeder out, which is an automatic feeder. Yeah. So it goes off once a day, round about sort of nine o'clock at night, or should I say once in really? the evening. Oh, we'll see it go then. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so we get foxes, muntjac, roe deer, fallow deer, Are they? and the occasional wild boar. So who knows? You didn't mention the word guarantee then. I didn't guarantee, <laughs> no. You liar! I you can, told I, me on the phone yesterday, I guarantee you will see one. I guarantee you'll see <laughs> one at the, at the other side. Oh, OK. At, at your house? Yeah. Yeah, OK. All right. But so out here then we've got, there's the bait, the, the, rab, the dead rabbits we put out. So we've got dead rabbits, we've got rabbit guts that I had in the freezer. Um, so I always, whenever I do a big rabbit shoot, I always save all the guts, put them in the freezer for nights like tonight. So you put them out in the field, just as bait, nice strong smell. Mm. Um, and not only that, if the fox doesn't come, then it's it's food for the buzzards, and we have got goshawks in here as well. Oh, wow. So, and it, it attracts covids, jays, rook, not rooks, jays. Well, we've seen jays just yeah. now, haven't we? Crows. Ravens. Yeah. We've heard the raven, but not seen it. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lovely spot. We're sat. So I own four acres here and three acres over there, and the wood itself is about 230 acres. Oh, really? So it's a big old wood, and it's it's done sectioned up in off. Com yeah, yeah, compartments. Yeah. So some people have got 10 acres. Most of them are sort of anywhere between three and four acre compartments. 
Well, a few moments after that conversation, George spotted the very same fallow pricket, which I took care of by swapping seats. So there it is. I'm not a big lover of filming deer shooting. They're not vermin, so I don't film it. So what I haven't filmed is the fact that we've just shot, well, not just shot, half an hour ago. It was, it was within the time limit of an hour after sunset. Um, a fallow pricket. And how did you describe it, George? A bloody great big thing. <laughs> Fortunately, George says, lucky one of us can walk. <laughs> so he's been over and growled it, and we've left it. Um, on the floor just down the side of the hut here. So he's, he's very lucky because uh, in the two years I've owned this wood we've only seen about three fallow prickets and uh, there's only two now yeah <laughs> and I've never shot one <laughs> so uh, yeah but you did say guaranteed so I did say guaranteed you're so true to your word congratulations thank you very much I didn't realize how big they are no, that, well, so I, that's not really fully grown, is it? Well, that one there is probably... He uh, wouldn't get any bigger than that at the moment. Next year he might put on a bit of weight. Um, sort of round about this time of year they start to put on a bit of weight to sort of fight. But um, I would imagine he's going to come in at 35 kilos, yeah. something like that, which is about just over twice the size of a roe deer. Yeah. Um, we'll get him back, we'll weigh it, and uh, yeah, not a bad start. Big old lump, isn't it? Yeah, let's well, start the evening. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, I, never, you'll never live that down, uh, will you? Well, I was talking about the house, but now we've shot one here, I can say it was about the woods. Well, that's it, yeah, it doesn't matter now. Uh, but, um, Pressure's off you. Yeah. I think he's over the house. We do come sunrise. They do get a lot of fallow, but there's obviously there's a lot of does. They're not in at the moment. No, no, no. Well, it's so, the yorks, um, isn't it? But I have seen half a dozen different prickets over at the house. So who knows? Like I say, come sunrise, you might get another one. Yeah. Um, but then obviously over at the house. I wonder if I can do a deal with the surgeon <laughs> to knock a bit off of my hip yeah. for a bit of venison. Do you think yeah. it's worth asking? Who knows, you might be offering him a bit of wild boar later. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's the other guarantee, isn't it? No, I wouldn't say that's guaranteed. <laughs> but they're definitely there, most nights. Definitely, maybe. Definitely. Right, so what's the plan then? We're going to do another hour or so here yeah. and then move we'll across? It, yeah, let's, let's give it to about, what? It's half ten quarter now. Past, quarter past eleven, oh. half eleven. Yeah. That'll get us out of the hour. house yeah. for about twelve o'clock. Okay. Um, so if we say quarter past eleven, start packing up. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have got a bit of extra baggage to and take then, back. Yeah, well. and then that'll give you, like I say, we've we've had boar over at the house from round about eight o'clock in the evening. Just lately, they've been coming between ten and two, but then I've seen them on the cameras at five in the morning. I've okay. seen them at four in the afternoon. Okay. So. There's a very good chance you'll see one, mm. but not guaranteed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Is it writing that in pencil, are you? Well, we said that we would pack up and get to uh, George's house for midnight, and so we, we did pack up on time and took a very steady drive back through the woods. Um, I'm brightening this picture up, but it was it was almost totally dark, but we did have a pretty good mood. So this is the view from George's hide in the following morning. Obviously, I went there in the dark, so I was unaware of how steep down that drop was. In fact, it was 12 degrees, and George had built the hide with an equally sloping floor. So it was a little bit um, unusual the fact that I didn't realise that I was shooting that far downhill um, which also meant that I should have aimed a little bit higher on the shot. So here's number one, this is 2.30 in the morning. So again I was implementing that sort of three second rule, find it, get on it, shoot it. Um, I didn't know how long he was going to be there for. Big spurt of blood you'll see there, so definitely hit an archery there I think. So, so 2.30, so I reloaded the gun, put it onto safe, stuck it down on the floor, had a quick look with the scope and that thing was there about 10 seconds later. 
walking around like a cat obviously like a defensive or submissive with that arched back so you can see the first fox shot there this one I think I clip it with the first shot and then I actually follow it up through the woods and get it again um, but I didn't bother record well, I didn't have time to record it so take it from me this one does get hit uh, and we will see that in a little while so there's that sort of submissive arched back walk that he was doing and he went off like a long dog so I did then follow that up and did see it creeping around in the woods and put another one in him so this one is number three and George had seen this regularly at six o'clock in the morning so this was actually 5.30 so he's a little bit early for breakfast Again, get that three second rule on there, don't mess about. Left half of him on the hedge. But, um, I was unaware of how long these were going to be there. George has said that they do, don't do tend to stick around in the garden for long on his camera. So it was get it, find it, shoot it. So the next morning, George, he'd gone to bed at about I mean, half past 12. See, I don't have a gun dog, I have a George dog today. So that was that's the second one. That's another dog fox. I'm not going to get too close because it's made a right as I thought. I'd clipped it and opened it up. Um, you could see the splash of that against the... Um, oh. It's different than that colour. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, all three of them are different colour. Yeah, but I've never seen one as, as light, light as that. As that. Yeah. So, three foxes and a fallow. And a fallow. Yeah, not stunning. No, not a bad evening. That was really good. Well, another picture of that first one. A really, really light colour. And George is saying the fallow deer in that area are also very light in colour as well. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to click on that subscribe and smash the notification bell. And a massive thank you for George for his hospitality. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheerio!